Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so did I have Ellen Didier on the line, and she's founder and president of Red Sage Communications. Ellen, welcome to the show. Good to be here. All right, Ellen. So uh, we have a big topic today. So we'll be talking about B2B lead generation and and technology and really how companies are in the manufacturing sector, how they're taking how they're taking advantage of this, how they're using technology to generate leads and most importantly, convert those leads, which you're an expert on. So excited to get into that. Um, But before we do, we'll start this episode the way we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Ellen, uh, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Ellen, what mission matters to you? So really, my mission is to know that at the end of the day, the marketing services that my company, Red Stage, provides Mm-hmm. moves the needle and provide helps manufacturing and technology companies grow. It's yeah. really important to me to know that at the end of the day, we're an important part of making American businesses stronger because we're helping them grow through the marketing services we provide. We do a lot of really flashy, fun, exciting things to build brand, to build visibility. But really at the end of the day, it's when we see the results of it and the partnerships that we have with our clients because we're so aligned with their goals in their industry that the best work shines and we really know that we have a hand in their success and Mm. America's success. So that's what matters to me. It's amazing and love bringing mission-based individuals on the line to share what really gets them going. And I have to say, so you're wearing, you know, beautiful red, uh, red sage. Um, I'm wearing a red tie. I like the color red. Like, is there a story behind the red? There is indeed. So red is the color to stand out and be visible. So red sage, red, the whole point is for us to provide services that are visible, that do help people stand out. And then sage is for sage advice, Mm -hmm. where we are able to be very strategic in what we do, very wise in what we do. So there's a lot of meaning in red. It's also my favorite color. Got married in a red wedding dress. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's amazing. I figured there was something. I wasn't going to say, oh, yeah, my tie was matched, but uh, but I like red as well as uh, my viewers know because I wear a red tie. So there you go. Um, all right. So kind of going further into the subject. So um, how did you get, we're going to go into manufacturing and people that have been watching this show for a, a long time, they know um, I'm personally interested in manufacturing, what that renaissance looks like and where we're going forward with this. So I love bringing on marketers that are kind of really pushing the needle on that industry but how did you get started on this path to to marketing and to really helping these companies like where did it all begin sure so i started red sage in 2006 but prior to that i don't have an agency background even though we're Mm -hmm. the largest agency in north alabama and one of the largest in the state i didn't come out of that agency and very few of our team members did my Mm -hmm. background was with a small marketing company that was founded by a guy who did industrial sales a wow. lot of pump distributors, so centrifugal pumps, pumps ben, uh, mm-hmm. ventricle pumps, all of that. And so a lot of my early, and this is going to show my age, a lot of my early work mm-hmm. was in industrial sales for pump distributors to really understand how to do direct mail to raise leads, how to build the early websites, and how to use some of the traditional media, but primarily direct mail, print, and um, traditional media back then. Of course, over time, as the company's grown, we've really expanded our services. We've um, started out in 2006 when I started the company, always have had a big focus in B2B because of my background. But we've grown from, I think we added our first two employees a year after I started. We're up to 17 now, and we're looking for to increase up to 25 over the next couple of years. And holy cow, the tools have changed so much. (laughs) Um, partic- you know, with digital marketing, when I started the yeah. company, no social media was in place yet. Um, WordPress wasn't widely in use. So a lot of changes in mm-hmm. the industry. So I'd like to, 
I'd like to actually go further on that, on the idea of change in this evolution. And I'll tell you yeah. why. So when I think about manufacturing, when I think about some of the people that are in, in that industry that, you know, own businesses that have maybe tried to um, uh, adopt, you know, this digitization process and, and people are, everybody's at a different point in their, in their journey, we'll say with this, um, all companies are, whether it's starting their first website or, or starting a website or, or updating one that's been out there for 20 years that they said they had a website just because somebody told them they had to have a website, right? right. Like there's yeah. so many different people. So not to pick on anyone, but um, just to kind of let them see behind the curtain on some of the things that you're able to do now. It's like some of the sure. things that are updated because it's not like it once was. Like so much has changed and year by year things change. Like I'm, I'm always shocked when my team brings me a new tool and we're in media. This is our business. And when we get a new tool <laughs> or something else and I'm like, oh my gosh, we can do this now? That's amazing. So maybe like repeat, let us peek behind what this evolution has looked like. Sure. So again, when we started in 2006, yeah. it really was traditional media. So a lot of support collateral for business to business people. Yeah. We did websites, we did print materials, and then, you know, again, traditional TV radio for mm -hmm. consumer clients. But um, over time, first social media came out, and that was interesting because marketing became story-based. Yeah. It took a little bit for that to get monetized, where mm -hmm. advertising was then available. And, of course, you had to decide, was it MySpace going to be the one that yeah. triumphed, or was it Facebook? It became Facebook, but then others, Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and now TikTok with the next generation. It just continues to adapt and change. Mm -hmm. The marketing gets better and better. The data that's available, the targeting tools that are available – Social media changes literally every day. Yeah. And to it, it's really interesting because it affected even our staffing where we used to be staffed with generalists. And now we need specialists because there's yeah. too much to know, too much to, that changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So social media was the first big thing um, that came out. Websites and then when smartphones came out. So yeah. adapting websites so they would adapt to everything, having social media with you always. The phone, smartphones was the next huge innovation after so after social media and how to change your marketing to adapt to those devices where it was with people all the time. Other things that have come in, LinkedIn as the platform for business to business, mm -hmm. Twitter, um, increasingly important. Yeah. So a lot of those tools, what's also been interesting though, particularly with business to business, is how much more important people started to get away from some of the traditional approaches. Yeah, there's a return to that now. We're really using earned media and paid media yeah. to get media coverage of the clients on a national level um, mm -hmm. in their industries to their target markets and leading publications or bloggers mm -hmm. or influencers. That's a really huge strategy that it's been a huge increase with our clients that we've utilized over the last couple of years because mm -hmm. the downside to some of these tools is just the static and mm -hmm. sometimes earned media really, really cuts through that in a more visible way with a longer form story that builds trust and credibility. Mm -hmm. So really, really interesting. Google Google is a whole other thing with the search search yeah. capabilities and how to target and geo-target. To me, it's like at one point we had, you know, we had a screwdriver and a hammer. We had like two different <laughs> yeah. things we could do. We'd say, this is what we can do. We're either like, we're either putting a screw in or we're hitting that nail. One of the two, like that's it. <laughs> that's now right. you have all, you have, infinite fasteners you have different types of bolts you have different like yeah. there's just so much out there you have uh ball bearings running around the floor i mean you have things all over the place and now you're able to really hit different markets maybe be a little bit more yeah. niche maybe have more um not saying that the old strategies weren't thought out by the way so obviously magazine advertising things like this they had their own metrics for measuring and of course all these things but yeah. now now you can really be a specialist, like you mentioned, not just in the yeah. job function, but in terms of like campaigns and things that you want to actually accomplish. Can you tell me a little bit more about what something like that might look like? Yeah, so the specialist idea, it, and we've really narrowed in on B2B as yeah. a key idea. So mm -hmm. as a key target market for us, mm -hmm. the specialist in staffing was really how do we get people who truly understand not only the
the psychology of marketing for business to business Mm -hmm. and how these tools are changing and how do you adapt, but also really understanding how to then apply those tools in Mm -hmm. ways that resonate and accomplish the client's goals. Mm -hmm. Really zeroing in. Previous marketing was very much, here's who we are, the push story, very Mm -hmm. general statements. It was about branding and brand visibility, but not nearly Mm -hmm. as engaging. Mm -hmm. Now, if one of the goals is education, for example, one of our clients, Artemis Shielding, one of their goals, they have a really unique product that's very unique in the market. It is um, lead-free radiation shielding. So they're competing in um, the nuclear industry, healthcare. Primary thing is airports. They're Mm -hmm. lighter weight curtains because they're not lead-based for that the suitcases go through in the materials, but also breaking into aerospace with lightweight radiation shielding for taking things to the space station Mm -hmm. is one of the things that they've done. So to tell that kind of story, because it's a unique product, video for education is important. Mm -hmm. Targeting with all of the back-end tools, we could target decision makers on LinkedIn in various industries. We could target by client, by company name. We could target by title. There's a lot of targeting that's specialized, which we never had before. You could have a trade (laughs) publication and hope people saw your print ad. This is a lot more targeted and there's a lot more data feedback. What's working? Where are they going? How long are they staying? Did they fill out a form? Did it it generate a call? We have tracking software that Mm -hmm. can actually track the results of of campaigns by visitor traffic to a website by company name. And having that tool for business Mm -hmm. development team members is huge to be able to not only see the data metrics, but to see by company name where you could then make that part of your lead follow up um, when they might be kicking the tires without even calling you first. Oh, man, I love it. And I love that you brought such a niche example. And because I I mean, I like to examine this from both sides of it, of the spectrum. So um, from the company side point of view, like they get to get the, the real targeting so that they know their message is getting in front of the right population or the right types of people. Yeah. On the other side of the of the coin, so to speak, um, you know, the people, the executives that need to see that information are getting it. Like when I think about like when I open up my feed, I I'm, I might be it might be because I'm a media guy, Ellen. So I might be the only <laughs> person that says this, but I I actually do. I'm like, all right, I'm a media executive. I own a media company. I co-founded. I have certain needs, certain things that I'm trying to do to improve our company and our reach for our clients, so that the message gets out further. I hope somebody's targeting me with my public profile, so that I'm, they're giving me more things that can <laughs> help to, to help my clients better. Like I hope somebody's targeting me, like. Don't give me some ad I don't need to see. Give me something that's going to help me. So there's some, in my opinion, the targeting creates really a win-win scenario. If you look at the big picture of things. And and it works. So going back to Artemis, the amazing thing, and actually before I even share this story, one of the things that I hear a lot and my team members hear a lot when we're talking to a prospective business-to-business client Mm -hmm. who hasn't really done a lot of digital before, they're suspicious. Mm -hmm. The biggest question, are people really on LinkedIn? Are they really yeah. using it? I don't know. Maybe we should do a billboard. And mm-hmm. it, they don't, they need to be convinced. So when the, when the question is, starts, Ellen, with are they on LinkedIn, do you get a little scared? Um, <laughs> it's not unusual to yeah. have a very basic. And we're typically coming in where people have done the basics and they yeah. start to understand the importance of marketing. It, you know, our client base is a lot more savvy than it used Absolutely. to be because as we've grown. But with Artemis, a real example of targeting. So with the content, well, well, good content is another key thing with the video content that we can do now, which really does get by far the best results, the best engagement. Targeting a video, explaining the lightweight nature of their material for radiation shielding. They got a call from a company executive who was looking and wanted to explore their product for shielding to shield... Um, equipment, like an equipment cladding to shield from uh, shielding the equipment from radiation that goes on the International Space Station. That Mm -hmm. turned into a client, a great case study, but that was completely driven from a LinkedIn target to those markets with good content that's video, that's engaging, that's educated about the benefits of this innovative product. 
What what an amazing story. And I, I mean, that, that that's <laughs> like when somebody watches this, so there's two type of people. There's the person that's going to say, wow, that's amazing. I need to like, all right, this might be the time and this might be what it takes for me to embrace this whole digital um, digitization that's happening. And then some are like, ah, that that's just one example. So for the ones that are saying that's just one example, I know you have many, 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 but like, what's another example of like we're targeting or where the right type of campaign can work? And it can be from LinkedIn, it could be really from any different type of, of uh, digital campaign, but just let, let's have another one for those people that think that was sure. an isolated incident. Yeah, absolutely. So Artemis, excuse me, not Artemis, Ace Aeronautics. This mm -hmm. client is, it's another really interesting client. They yeah. were a startup. I think they started in 2015 mm -hmm. and their, their mission is to solve aviation obsolescence challenges. Mm -hmm. They really, their bread and butter is retrofitting the cockpit of Black Hawks for military mm -hmm. organizations around the world. So they have a global mm -hmm. organization. You know, one of their clients is Austria. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's significant what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we always start with the branding piece of it because you've got to know who you are. You've got mm -hmm. to make it compelling. And like just that statement, they solve aviation obsolescence challenges. Yeah. Very, very focused, very understandable a lot can be built around that with messaging. Some of the things we've done, yes, we did do LinkedIn advertising, but one of the tools we used for them, they were going over to aviation mm -hmm. conferences globally. So way across the seas in Asia, in mm -hmm. Europe, and we were using Google, Google advertising that was mm -hmm. geo-targeted in an area around the conference center to raise additional visibility to people who were staying in hotels mm -hmm. and attending the conferences. So mm -hmm. tracking it that much to raise and give that boost even outside of the convention hall really yielded good results for them, a lot of visibility yeah. and a lot of comment and buzz. One of the comments they said coming back from these trade shows was there was a noticeable recognition that there was buzz about ACE. Mm -hmm. And this is a startup. You know, they were they're competing with Lockheed, they're competing yeah. with major, major well-known brands in the aerospace industry, and they were getting mm -hmm. traction and really presenting themselves at the same level, including competing on the similar contracts mm -hmm. and winning some of them, even though they were a much smaller company. So uh, th that's another way with Google mm -hmm. advertising that's linked to conference appearances worked well. Mm -hmm. The Lead View Pro that I talked about, tracking mm -hmm. visitors to websites, that's another innovative thing. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of clients don't know or a lot of prospective clients that we have worked with weren't aware that you could track by company name. Wow. And that's helpful for business yeah. development. If you know, well, somebody's kicking around my website, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's all of a sudden a warm lead that you could follow up on instead of just guessing. So those are two other examples of what could be used in the modern landscape. Yeah, that and that that the one that you you mentioned in terms of like targeting for conferences and things like that, like that's such an advanced strategy that so many people can can benefit from. And I've yeah. seen people do that in other industries for years. And so the fact that you're bringing that to manufacturing and, and things like that, I mean, you're just it's it's great because the people that that are working with the right types of you know forward thinking people in in their marketing efforts like they can really benefit because not everybody like even that that nugget that you just gave like that's I've seen it happen by the over and over again I didn't know that for the for the um for the viewers I didn't know Ellen was going to bring that up but I've seen uh, I've seen that happen like time and time again where a small company with a forward thinking marketing team does something like that and all of a sudden they they have this disproportionate like reach and view and like people don't even realize they're like why do I know this company why do I know this name or why do I know this CEO like I've heard his name somewhere they don't even necessarily realize but they probably saw some of the content throughout the weeks leading up to the up to the conference so that whether they knew it or not like over time they already kind of already were predisposed to want to meet that person or meet with that company and figure out right. like, okay, what's, what's behind this? Like, I, I know, I know them. I don't know where from, but what is it? And then when the two connect and there's actually that face-to-face -face or whatever the interaction is, like some great things can happen. Absolutely. It builds credibility mm -hmm. and trust and through the visibility that's gained before you even have the conversation. Yeah, amazing. Um, so let's go further into the, the thought process of platforms. So um, I, I always like to have this this conversation. I have it with in many different industries, but in terms of marketing. So you mentioned um, 
um, LinkedIn. So I know that's a big one. You mentioned Google. Um, are we, and we don't have to go too far into this, but when we think about the TikToks or staying on the cutting edge, I guess, like, do we need to do that? Or are we okay with starting with kind of the basics and like the, you know, the LinkedIn's and some of the other things and making sure those bases are covered? Like, what are your thoughts on just platforms overall? Yeah, so LinkedIn for business to business is number one, yeah. closely followed by Twitter. So those are the two mandatory where if you only want to dip your foot in, that's where I'd start. Mm -hmm. Facebook is effective if you have a good HR person, and that's an excellent HR strategy platform. Mm -hmm. You still share a lot of the lead generation content, but it really is about personality. It's about culture. It's about mm -hmm. stories like that. It's mm -hmm. more engaging. So I, I look at Facebook really enters strongly when there's a recruiting focus, which you know mm -hmm. nowadays is pretty important. So after that, the TikTok, we're starting to see it come out in community marketing, um, which is another interesting thing about Red Sage. Mm. We don't only market the manufacturers and technology companies. We actually help the communities that want to attract them mm -hmm. market the community mm. as a fit for innovative companies. But we're seeing uh, mm. communities use TikTok. It's really, I think it's going to be used more increasingly in HR um, mm. I think it's going to be more in consumer based and gradually as it matures, we'll find its way more and more into B2B. Mm -hmm. It's not a standard tool we use, but I could see it coming. Mm. I mean, it, it surpassed what it has surpassed. It, it, it just became one of the top websites, you know, over Google. Yeah. So, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. amazing. I, I don't think it's stopping, but uh, no, not you can't clean. ignore it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think it's stopping anytime soon, but uh, not the marketing expert here you are. Um, so speaking of that, I know we've talked about um, Red Sage a little bit, but I want to go further into your business. So um, obviously, lots of growth. You mentioned you focus yeah. on manufacturing. Maybe go a step further and just give us a feel for, you know, the types of clients or the types of industries within manufacturing that get the get the most benefit out of working with uh, with you and your team. I know you already mentioned, you know, aerospace and things like that. Give us some more on, on kind of industries. Sure. So um, metal fabrication, mm -hmm. my core industries, we've seen a lot of success building their brand and expanding visibility nationally. Any mm -hmm. supplier that supports aerospace, any manufacturer or okay. fabrication company or engineering company that supports some of these industries is mm -hmm. really a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. If they have a national or global market, so they're not just looking locally, they're really looking to reach how do we get this spread out. They could be a small regional or local company with yeah. a national presence. So that's a really good fit. Mm. Um, automotive. So one of our clients is Mazda Toyota Manufacturing. Mm. Incredible yeah. story about two yeah. major brands, global brands came together. They built a facility in Huntsville, which is booming right now. A lot of wow. innovation happening in Huntsville. Mazda Toyota Manufacturing has built a facility here. And it's an interesting story. They're not mm. building a new model with both brands. They're keeping their, the, whatever comes off their manufacturing line is either a Mazda or a Toyota, but they're wow. sharing ideas and hoping that the partnership between them really generates innovation, mm -hmm. shared values, collaboration, and they really believe that great things and great work and great advances in automotive is going to come off of that line. And I believe it, just watching what wow. happens out of them. So with uh, Mazda Toyota, this is a company that has a new product. So a brand new Mazda um, SUV is coming off the line. Red Sage is supporting on product announcements and product pr mm. new product promotion there. So even companies where if they're not look, they could be looking for the ongoing brand awareness lead generation, mm -hmm. but also there's a place with Red Sage for companies who are looking to introduce innovation, new technology. How yeah. do you get that awareness? How do you get the buzz? How do you get the coverage? How do you get as many eyeballs as possible on this product launch? So we're doing it with Mazda Toyota mm -hmm. Manufacturing. Any company that's really looking for HR and recruiting support. So whether it is they are recruiting and they're looking for leadership nationally or very key professional, not a good platform if you're looking for blue collar workers, but yeah. anybody who's looking at technical workers, but you can't just do LinkedIn. That one really has to be combined with a website that shows employees, employee mm -hmm. stories, culture is so important to convey. So we're seeing more and more recruiting specific websites. 
that yeah. really are better at telling that story. We're about to launch one, stay tuned for Mazda Toyota Manufacturing, that yeah. really will be more about the culture and recruiting. It's gonna be a recruiting tool paired with that LinkedIn campaign. So um, those are other examples. Yeah. We have clients that, so other examples of clients we might work with, LMI. They yeah. do um, handheld um, laser gauges that yeah are good for quality control in the aerospace and automotive industries, just measuring yeah. caps or curvatures or, you know, offsets or anything like that. So anybody who's dealing with mm -hmm. a product that supports automotive aerospace advanced manufacturing mm -hmm. that needs to target nationally or globally, that's really what we could help with mm -hmm. recruiting and um, product announcements. What about, uh, what about like size of company? Is this only, you mentioned, you mentioned Mazda Toyota. So I mean, obviously really large company. Are you able to, are you working also with like middle market or like, give us a feel for that. Like who's typically a good fit? Yeah, it's interesting. Most of ours are the small to mid-sized manufacturing. Mm. So the budgets that we're looking at for a lot of our smaller manufacturers really yeah. Well, they could save money by partnering with Red Sage versus mm. hiring a marketing person in house that yeah. has a much narrower field of expertise. Mm -hmm. You know, they, the marketing person would still have to outsource. Yeah. So for clients that have a good, strong business development and they know they need to be professional, but they really don't want to add another head with benefits, yeah. Red Sage is a really, really cost-effective way to do it where, you know, you're going to pay, mm -hmm. but you're not going to pay as much as that salary load plus benefit load is. Plus you're getting the team of experts in all the different areas versus mm -hmm. one narrow. So that's one example. A lot of other times though, like um, there will be clients that do have a marketing and business development person, which is great because a lot mm -hmm. better social media on their end that they can manage. And we could focus in other areas with the strategy or the video development to support that. But um, th those, it could be, the Mazda Toyota is a large, largest yeah. organization we would work with. Mm -hmm. Most of the others are small to mid-size. Yeah. They might have. It sounds, a like, of, um, it sounds almost like um, fitting that that outsourced like CMO model. So oh yeah, that, absolutely. And, and, like so, and for those that are watching that aren't familiar with that, maybe you've heard of outsourced CFO. So you have a you know an outside company going and do some of the yeah. CFO, the higher level strategy things and implementation. So I've heard of, of this huge trend of people now going that route as well. You might have your internal marketing you might even have a marketing team a couple of people but yeah. as, as things get more specialized as things are advanced like having a team you know a larger team that is working on this and also the benefit of them working with other people and other individuals being able to stay in front of trends that your internal team okay. necessarily can't keep up with and i've seen That's that happen exactly right. time and time again um in, in different industries so it's interesting because it's it obviously applies to, to manufacturing. Maybe, can you speak a little bit on that? Just the outsource CMO role from, from your point? Yeah, I, I think it makes a ton of sense, especially yeah. for smaller companies mm -hmm. that, um, again, don't really know that they have enough for a marketing person. The yeah. fact with Red Sage, I have accounts people, um, account executives, and their job is to get in the skin of that client to really, really understand them. They're the relationship yeah. builders. They're the ones that stay uber focused mm -hmm. on what that client wants to achieve, who they are, what their mission is, all of that. So that's the account person. That is your person who really functions as mm -hmm. an ex extension of your team as far as understanding of the company and goals. Yeah. They're supported at Red Stage by a specialist or a lot of specialists, a team of specialists. So we have people specific with web. I have a um, digital... Uh, the specialist, di a digital visibility specialist, whose job it is to really understand outside of even the Google advertising, though he has yeah. a bazillion different certifications with Google, mm -hmm. how do we use a lot of the other online visibility tools, whether to really raise visibility outside of the typical. Mm -hmm. The uh, social media specialist, like I said before, too complex for one person to know. Design mm -hmm. specialist, video specialist. You need all of these people now for marketing. And if you have a marketing director, you're paying a strategy for somebody who may have a narrower understanding of what's changing to your point yeah. than a team of these different specialists whose job it is. And their job in my company is not only to serve our clients, but to stay up to date in their fields with professional mm -hmm. development by monitoring what's changing in the industry. And we have one of those environments at Red Straight Sage that's extremely collaborative. We're so interconnected and intercollaborative as a team 
that we need every team member to say, here's what I'm seeing and how we can apply mm -hmm. it. Here's what I'm seeing and how we can apply it. We've built an environment here where our entire team in their specialty area brings those ideas, trends, and new ideas forward every day. And somebody in-house just can't do that. Mm. Well, Ellen, uh, I have to say, first off, it's been excellent having you on the show today. And I know you and I can talk marketing all day, but we're about out of time <laughs> yeah. on this one. So I just have to say so. I mean, I mean, you guys are obviously are your, your team is growing. I mean, successful. You got you're helping a lot of clients as just by some of the examples that you gave us today. I mean, I just have to ask. So what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for Red Sage? Uh, continued growth, continued investment in our team, con continued investment in equipment, mm -hmm. um, all of that. So yeah, we're, we're just looking at continuing. I'd love to be mm -hmm. at 25 employees versus 17 within the next two years. Yeah. And that just gives us a more stable base, a solid base to really be able to expand and grow with any of our clients. Fantastic. And we shall both wear more red. I see that in our future. <laughs> and wear more red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, uh, to the viewers, if this is your first time uh, tuning in to Mission Matters, we're a platform that's all about bringing mission-based entrepreneurs, executives, and experts on the line and having them share, like, why do they do what they do? Like, why do they wake up every morning and make sacrifices to go out into the marketplace and to do good and to help their clients and really just to progress us all forward? So if that's the content uh, mm -hmm. that you're into or the type of content that you like, I definitely encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We have many more mission-based uh, individuals coming on the line and we definitely don't want you to miss a thing. And Ellen, it really has been a pleasure. If somebody wants to connect and to learn more about Red Sage, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, first visit our website at redsageonline.com or connect with us on LinkedIn or any of our other social media channels. Fantastic. And we'll put all of that information into the show notes so that um, our viewers can just head on right over and just uh, click on the link and go check out your website and connect with you and your team. And uh, Ellen, really, thank you. It has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.